ಹೇಗೆ ಮುನ್ನೋಡಿಯಾ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಕ್ಲಿನಿಕಲ್ ಸಿನೆರಿಯೋ ಅ 27 ಇಯರ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ವುಮನ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ 6 ಮಂತ್ ಹಿಸ್ಟರಿ ಆಫ್ ಅನೋರಿಯಾ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆಂಟ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಹಿಸ್ಟರಿ ಆಫ್ ಹೈಪೋಥೈರೋಯಿಡಿಸಮ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಕಶ್ಮೀರಸ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಥೈರೋಯಿಡ್ ವಾಲ್ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅ ನ್ಯೂ ಥೈರೋಯಿಡಿಸಮ್ 100 ಮೈಕ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ಸ್ ಡೇಲಿ ಶಿ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮೈಲ್ಡ್ ಆಕ್ನಿ ವೆಜಾನಲ್ ಟ್ರಾಮಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೈಟ್ ಸ್ವೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮೈಲ್ಡ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷುಯಲ್ ಆಕ್ನಿ ಅ ಥೈರೋಯಿಡ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಎನಿ ನೋಡ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ and galactoria findings from physical pelvic examination are unremarkable except for pale vaginal necrosis so lab results are showing uh, as below tsh is 3 which is normal estradiol is less than 20 kg per ml which is obviously pointing towards hypoestrogenia fsh is 93.6 prolactin is 6.7 and beta hcg is undetectable which one of the following would be the most appropriate next test measure lh Uh, perform pituitary MRI, measure anti-nuclear antibodies, measure ovarian antibodies, perform karyotype analysis. So we'll talk about the answer at the end of the session. Uh, the clinical scenario is the next. Then, so this is the normal uh, genetic track. So I'd like to give a few uh, 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 glimpses of what is the normal internal genital organ direction during the embryology. Unlike males where uh, both the renal urogenital tract is uh, developing almost from the same, almost have the same origin, that is mesonet from ductal system, uh, females have a completely uh, different uh, genesis of their uh, upper and lower genital tract, that is from the Mullerian duct, which is a paramesonetal duct, otherwise called as. So this is the, as you can see, the blue one is the, uh, yeah, this is the gonad and this is the Ulfian duct from which the male internal genital organs arise. The female duct, which is the pink one, is a Mullerian one, uh, from which all the upper and the lower, uh, upper one third of the vagina and the upper one third of the vagina arise. So here, as we can see, uh, without Mullerian inhibiting substance, in females, we don't have Mullerian inhibiting substance, but they don't have Mullerian inhibiting substance in the absence of that. The Mullerian structure develops, whereas the female duct will uh, perish. And uh, we have developed and broken. uterus, fallopian uh, tubes, and the upper one third of the vagina. Whereas in the presence of MIS and androgens, both combinations should be there for the development of the male genital structures. So this is showing as male duct, uh, as a menal vesicle, vas deferens, and prostate. So that is the internal genital development in the embryo, uh, embryonic phase. Uh, so these are the various influences which come into play. during the embryological uh, development. As you can see, it's not only the, the gonadal uh, ridge from where the, uh, which are formed, which are arising from the germ cells, genital crest or gonadal ridge, is uh, whenever it gives, uh, it differentiates into testis in the presence of, of course, the XY karyotype, you have Lydi cells and Sertoli cells. So Lydi cells under the influence of the elation deficit of the fetal pituitary gland, which is in turn stimulated by the placental HCG and gland form and closing hormone of mothers, uh, it will uh, produce testosterone, which is essential for development of intermenal genitalia, as uh, we already mentioned in the last one and the next, in the next picture also, uh, just beside picture, you can see past difference in man and vesicles. That we did miss all this uh, developing from the Wolfian duct system requires uh, testosterone. And for uh, development of external main genitalia, however, we require dihydro testosterone. This conversion requires fire for that case enzyme. Then, uh, yeah, anti-gonadal hormone is coming from sertoli cells, which is, uh, is, uh, which is uh, responsible for the mullerian regression in males. So that completes the logical development. And now we're going to start amnuria. Amnuria is basically an absence of menses which could be transient, intermittent, or a permanent one. or uh, it usually resulting from dysfunction of hypothalamus pituitary ovary uterus or vagina rajita your voice is echoing a bit can you just see if it can be more clear please it's echoing uh, can you be try to be loud and clear to the mic and and see that uh, please continue <clears throat> so amnuria Obviously, it uh, can be a transient intermittent or permanent condition resulting from dysfunction of the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis in these components. 
uterus or vagina uh, occurring the lower genital tracts. So your primary and secondary and non the classification is into primary and secondary. Primary and secondary is absence of anarchy by the age of 15 years or thereafter with normal growth and secondary sexual characteristics or absence of menses by 13 years without secondary sexual characteristics. Whereas secondary is absence of menses for more than three months in girls or women with previously regular cycles or six months in girls or women who had irregular menses. So we are going to talk about primary of nervia today. And yeah, these are the major causes of primary and secondary amenorrhea. Uh, talking about uh, primary amenorrhea causes, congenital anatomical abnormalities, uh, as we have already mentioned, either it is hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis or the genital upper and lower genital tract issues that would cause primary amenorrhea. So in anatomic abnormalities, we have congenital abnormality, malaria development, malaria genesis. Uh, which could be an isolated defect like in Rokitansky, uh, Kistrick Hauser syndrome, and Fusion Insensitive syndrome, and fire reductase deficiency. So, as uh, already mentioned, what are the factors uh, depending on which uh, the Mullerian ducts develop? Uh, in that, uh, the Mullerian, uh, I think the normal of Mullerian development is found in these three disorders. Androgen intensity, myocarditis deficiency, and as an isolated defect in Mullerian agency syndrome. Congenital defect of urogenital sinus uh, development uh, results in agenesis of lower uh, vagina and incorporate hymen. And then intrauterine additions is actually more of a, as a common cause of secondary amnesia. Then hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. In this case, and this can be because of congenital hypothalamic dysfunction or pituitary dysfunction. In ovarian dysfunction, we have gonadal dysgenesis, that is Turner's syndrome, and uh, or gonadal, uh, uh, yeah, gonadal dysgenesis, Turner's syndrome, or 46XY uh, karyotype is the other uh, uh, abnormality which we find uh, ovarian dysfunction. Other causes of primary ovarian insufficiency. PCOS uh, is actually being uh, mentioned as a cause of both primary as well as secondary abnormality. So the next is. Yeah, the evaluation, most uh, uh, important part, the initial part is the history. History has to be illustrated uh, very, in a very lucid way and requires a very uh, detailed, uh, detailed history uh, take so that we can uh, probably, we can definitely decide where, where we have to uh, take the evaluation into. So the first uh, uh, thing is, to find out if she had a normal growth right from the childhood, normal uh, milestones, uh, as well as if any neutral crisis was there in, uh, in the childhood itself, it could point to more of congenital adrenal paraplasia. And any poor health can also result in a manifestation of hypothalamic pituitary disease. So, normal growth is something is very important to be evaluated for. That is going to be a deciding factor if we have to really find uh, the, the, the uh, evaluate the general causes or uh, uh, reproductive system uh, causes and uh, uh, hormones and karyotype analysis. So that is the uh, first part, the growth growth is very important. And then the growth spurt in puberty, onset of puberty and the growth spurt that occurs during this period, development of axillary and pubic hair, epiphanes, wetlands, and breast development. Breast development uh, is, uh, is, is uh, basically an indicator of estradiol secretion. It indicates that ovary is actually functioning. So, the presence of breast is actually an indirect indicator that uh, is over is actually functioning. Of course, uh, except for complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, in females, breast development is an indicator of an adequate ovarian function. Then, uh, so if uh, there is no breast development and the other secondary sexual characters are absent, obviously the pubertal development is defective, and this could point to hypothalamic for pituitary disorder, uh, ovarian failure, or a chromosome abnormality. And if there is a delayed or absent puberty in the family history, sometimes the parents, one of the parents could have congenital uh, constitution delay in growth in puberty, which has to be elicited. And that could be one of the causes of the delayed puberty in this child as well. And therefore, we can give time before we start the uh, extensive evaluation. And uh, it's, it's quite costly and quite tedious, uh, as well as probably uh, psychologically affecting the patient also. So, Taking the right decision is very important to find if the patient is actually in CGDP uh, and uh, delay the evaluation. The 
Next is hyperandrogenism of symptoms. We have to look for hyperandrogenism symptoms like acne, hirsutism, any virilization. So this could be because of three causes, whether it could be PCOS or an androgen secreting ovarian or adrenal tumor or fire electric deficiency. So when you see hyperandrogenism, yeah, we have to evaluate these, uh, go for the DD comes into this three of them and we have to evaluate these three. And has there been any stress? Any change in uh, rapid, drastic decrease in weight, uh, change in uh, diet, vigorous exercise, uh, even anorexia, nervosa, even eating disorders are also associated with hypothalamic amenorrhea because of the adequate, uh, inadequate amount of the fat storage in the body, which is essential for the production of uh, female hormones. There is uh, hypothalamic, uh, hypothalamic amenorrhea results. And uh, so uh, in these cases, uh, the other, uh, of course, drugs we have to ask for if they are taking already any drugs, which could cause hypothalamic, um, like uh, any systemic illness, like sarcoidosis, can also result in hypothalamic amenorrhea. And uh, galactoria, the presence of galactoria is going to hypothalamia. Uh, any intake of drugs like metoclopramide is also important, antipsychotic drugs as well. Uh, we have to evaluate, uh, uh, ask for if there are any hypothalamic pituitary disease uh, signs like uh, headache, patient feel defects, fatigue, or polyuria, and polydipsia. So that completes the history part. Next is physical examination. In physical examination, we have to examine if the patient uh, have the uh, doctor in the lower genital structures are uh, intact and they are. Uh, so we have to look for uterus, vagina, and cervix. In this, in uh, uterus, vagina, and cervix, we need uh, the internal genital, uh, uh, external genital, we have to look for like the size, pubic hair, development, intactness of hormone, vaginal length, presence of cervix, uterus, ovaries. So the vaginal cotton, in a small cotton swan, which is always called as Q-tip, is actually utilized to see if the vagina can be penetrated or not. Uh, the other ways to use rectal examination for the evaluation of the internal organs. So as I already told, in um, prior of transient hostel muscle syndrome and ovarian agencies, uh, vaginal agencies or transfer to any septum, intact hymen, these are uh, the anatomic abnormalities that cause primary amenorrhea. Uh, and uh, it's usually, uh, if, mm, so basically mayor of transky in uh, hostel muscle syndrome refers to congenital absence of vagina with variable uterine development. Seven to ten percent of the women have normal but obstructive or rudimentary uterus with functional endometrium in these cases. Uh, and uh, yeah, as already told, tannestation of the breast development should be uh, noted down. And uh, growth, height, weight, and arm span. Usually, uh, normal arm span for this is within five centimeters of the height. And the toe chart should also be uh, drawn and see where they are actually falling in which percentile of the chart. Skin parties like androgenic features, like such as a mountain, stride, and this book and vision and should be looked for. Vitaligo is again pointing toward any autoimmune uh, disease. Next is the uh, yeah, internal syndrome. You'll see all the, you can see the, uh, if not all, at least few of the physical features like low hairline, the neck, she chest, and widely spaced nipples. And uh, yeah, measuring BP in both arms. Trying to see if there's any difference between them and helping uh, detecting practitioner or later. And that completes the physical examination. Next is the imaging part. In imaging, we can do pelvic ultrasound. If pelvic ultrasound comes out to be doubtful or not much useful, we can do MRI uh, as well, MRI pelvis. So, this will uh, definitely uh, to demarcate the ovaries, uterus, and cervix, and therefore. So find if the internal genital organs are present or not, and also will point out that there is any vaginal cervical outlet obstruction in patients with amenorrhea and cervical pain. Next is initial lab testing. Actually, the evaluation is in a very big algorithm. The algorithm is uh, there are two types of uh, two algorithms present mentioned in here according to presence of uterus and absence of uterus. So we talk about first starting with the presence of uterus, and that is the Mullerian duct has developed properly and uh, the uterus is present, either a, a 
based on the physical examination or in the pelvic ultrasound or MRI, whatever we have uh, seen uh, means we have tried to seek to find out. First, uh, if you find the uterus and uh, present with the presence of amenorrhea, the first thing we are definitely asking for is a HCG. HCG analysis is important. And next is after it has become ne after it's negative, then we go for evaluation of uh, pituitary hormones, FSH, TSH, prolactin, and uh, the other the, the, the total testosterone. So in these four hormones, uh, in when uterus is present, it is FSH that is going to be the deciding factor, which will uh, decide where we this analysis should be going on. If it is high FSH, yeah, so this is where it's going. High FSH, as we all know, um, because of the feedback mechanism, absence of feedback mm -hmm. mechanism, uh, in the absence of ovarian estrogen secretion, we have high uh, FSH. So this obviously is pointing towards either primary ovarian insufficiency or premature ovarian <coughs> failure, which could be because of either Turner syndrome or presence of Y chromatin. Either in absence of one X chromosome or presence of a Y chromatin. Uh, this presence of Y-chromatin is actually associated with a higher risk of gonadal tumors. And uh, yeah, evaluation in these patients, whenever we have high PFSH, so we go to karyotype. Ordering karyotype is the next step whenever you are finding high FSH because the only causes which cause high FSH are Turner syndrome, gonadal dysgenesis, or primary ovarian insufficiency. And primary ovarian insufficiency, uh, premature ovarian insufficiency or primary ovarian insufficiency, you have 46 exits. The karyotype is normal, it's a female, uh, perfectly normal, karyotypically normal female, but still, uh, because of the earlier degeneration of the ovarian follicles, they land up in uh, premature menopause. The other two, Turner syndrome, which is either 45X0 or mosaics, which is a combination of 45X0, 46X6. This is uh, the one and the other one is a gonadal distance is where we have presence of one chromatin. So differentiating them is important. These are the three causes of uh, high FSH. So then we have talked uh, talking about low or normal FSH. So in the, uh, when our turner syndrome is found, we have to evaluate for other uh, congenital heart disease, hypertension, hearing loss. This should be evaluated for as well as open and thyroid and adrenal disease should also be evaluated. In these patients. Next is uh, low or normal FSH. So, in low or normal FSH, we should first look for breast development if it is more than 10 stage 2 or not. If it is more than 2, then we look for the uterine tract anatomical abnormalities, which is I in front of a person. Either it is octopine disorder, infiltrate hymen and transpositional septum. Uh, if there is no uterine tract abnormality identified in ultrasound, you have to evaluate it for endocrine disorder. Either it is hyperprolactinia, abnormality usage, or hyperandrogenism, uh, like PCOS. Then, uh, if it is the breast animal stage is less than two, then we will go for uh, evaluation of hypothalamic pituitary uh, disorders. Uh, so, repeat the FSH and LH again. Both LH and FSH are very low, will point to congenital GNRH deficiency or uh, hypothalamic pituitary, other hypothalamic pituitary disorders. Constitution delay of puberty and growth is more of a diagnosis of exclusion. And this requires a good history take, and we have to wait uh, a bit before we go further for evaluation. And next is LH is low, FSH is low or normal. Uh, so these are uh, uh, this come uh, this picture is seen in functional hypothalamic amenorrhea and in systemic illness. As already told, uh, normal health is very important for uh, hypothalamus and pituitary ovarian access to come into play. So any systemic illness like celiac disease or hypothalamus mellitus, any other sarcoidosis, uh, all these can result in uh, hypothalamic amenorrhea. Functional hypothalamic amenorrhea is already told. Uh, Disorders, excessive stress, excessive exercise, excessive weight loss always can cause hypothalamic amenorrhea. So, in these cases, whenever uh, the patient uh, and pituitary MRI is uh, done in these cases uh, of pituitary, hypothalamic pituitary disorder, to rule out cellular mass in some patients who are uh, uh, complaining of headache, defects, and 
directory other the associated the applicant uh, manifestations. So that is the first part of the evaluation where uterus is present. So we are high FSH is going to the design factor and then into the high FSH to the carrier path analysis. Low FSH will go to lower genital tract uh, evaluation or endocrine evaluation. Next is uh, Yeah, the other part which we have missed is uh, sometimes FSH and high FSH can be in combination with hypertension could point to congenital abdominal hyperplasia and non classical case where something like hormone adoxys deficiency is uh, found. So, in these candidates, the serum progesterone is more than 3 nanograms per ml with deoxycorticosterone and low values for serum 17 alpha and oxycorticosterone. Uh, then Next is evaluation of primary and primary when uterus is absent. In these cases, uh, where we have found from chemical ultrasound, we found that uterus is absent. We first have ordered the karyotype and the total testosterone. In uh, this, we have 46 karyotype analysis showing 46 XY is either uh, complete androgen syndrome or prior product based deficiency. Prior product based deficiency of birth. They have either female genitalia or apical genitalia, that is ampicillus, and uh, unable to convert because of fire predictors and time deficiency. There is uh, absence of conversion of testosterone to the high testosterone, which is essential for the development of external genitalia, as already mentioned in the initial part. The realization of the time of puberty with serum testosterone and normal male range. However, at puberty, they do undergo the evaluation, but it will be different factors or com from complete androgens and essential syndrome. Here in complete androgen symptoms is complete female phenotype. However, uh, testosterone is in normal male range. So, this is a receptor uh, defect. And therefore, serum testosterone, however, high amount it is present, is not able to act. Uh, and uh, so, the resistance is there. Then, 46 excess. The other is 46 excess. Mullerian agents is male with transient hospital syndrome, where there is continual absence of vagina, usually with trinagent and genesis. Here, serum testosterone is in normal female range uh, because it is a 46 excess normal female character and uh, FSH is also normal, normal breast development again. So, the only problem here is with this malarian agency, it's a very uh, isolated defect of development of in the uh, female genital tract. Uh, So, uh, so after evaluation to see if it is, if it is present or absent and then subsequent the analysis, depending upon the cause, the management will be the pathology and what that female or unusual is actually residing for the one fertility or a normal uh, reproductive life and the uh, initial complication of disease process that is also due to the so all women with primary amenorrhea should be counseled. Counseling is very important because uh, not being normal is uh, obviously going to be really stigmatizing, stigmatizing to them, their family members, as well as psychologically it will be really uh, bad uh, seeing that they are not normal uh, normalcy. So, Discussing then what is the cause, underlying cause, potential treatment and therapy potential is very important. And uh, surgery will obviously depend upon what is the kind of anatomical lesion, whether it is complete uh, agenesis or it's a uh, presence of white chromosome, uh, like uh, there is some binary distances. So, because it is just vaginal outlet obstruction, transverse vision and septum presence, they can be uh, so operated and like, normal menstrual cycle can be brought about. In the case of malarian agencies, a new vagina is essential, uh, but this should be detailed and repeated until the woman got initially mature and ready to participate in the post of care required to 
maintain the maternal latency. The next is in those with bichromosome material, as I even told, because of the presence of bichromosome material, there is a predisposition to gonadal, uh, gonadal blastomas, neoplasia. But this is uh, more common only after this is common only after pivotal growth. But so you have to delay it at all any surgery uh, to be done for gonadectomy. You have to wait until normal growth to be pivotal spot is completed. And in primary ovarian insufficiency, hormone therapy is very uh, important. Either it is uh, continuous hormone therapy or a cyclic progesterone estrogen therapy. Uh, the treatment in a 50 year old woman and in a uh, an old, uh, an unfortunate uh, age group and an old uh, 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 lady in the age group is completely different. Uh, so that has to be uh, looked into because the uh, aim for uh, in both the cases to, uh, of treating is different. For a um, uh, woman in the age group, to maintain her normal uh, uh, healthy life is very important. For, whereas for a 50 year old woman, it is more of a Preventing osteoporosis, development of suffering from all these osteoporosis symptoms. So, in, uh, if it is PCOS, uh, we obviously direct uh, treatment towards hyperandrogenic features and their relief of hirsutism, even shamanensis and quadriga. And of course, long term consequences of PCOS, which are hematic hypoplasia, cancer, obesity, and metabolic deficits because of hyperextremism. Yeah, as I already told, in functional hypothalamic amenorrhea, uh, because of uh, excess uh, weight loss, you can reverse this by weight gain, adequate weight gain, and reduction in the intensity of excess, uh, exercise. If there is any uh, general illness that should be sorted, uh, that should be treated, and if there is any emotional stress, that also be, should be looked into <clears throat> and dealt with. Uh, so, uh, in these uh, women, uh, in these women with hypothalamic amenorrhea, if they want to become pregnant, they should be treated with pulsatile GnRH uh, therapy. But, uh, along with calvic intake is also important because even if they achieve uh, pregnancy with GnRH therapy, not having adequate amount of uh, nutrition because they're in a low, lower weight so that is not uh, very good for the time to so it's very important that they should be counseled to take adequate amount of calories as well. Uh, in in the same case, uh, for hypothermic or pituitary dysfunction that is uh, not reversible, uh, we can uh, go for the pulsatile energy therapy. These cases are also bad because uh, it will be reversible for hypothermic or pituitary dysfunction. Uh, so to uh, we have advances in assisted reproductive technologies which are uh, helping us to achieve uh, helping uh, the clinicians to help the patients to achieve the pregnancy even in terms of patients as well where they can use renal sites and their partners from in vitro fertilization allows them to carry pregnancy in their own uterus so uh, yeah so this completes the evaluation uh, i just wanted to give a glimpse of the major uh, disorders that were discussed in the above uh, evaluation part. Uh, Turner's syndrome, uh, which is the uh, most prominent uh, salient features being short stature, low hairline, weight of skin on neck, constriction of uh, coarctation uh, pyrotum, and other less less shin shaped thorax, elbow deformity, rudimentary ovaries of indigenesis, and absence of menstrual cycles, shortened metacarpal, foot metacarpal, small fingernails, and brown spots on nearby on skin. Next is, uh, yeah, this is a gonadal dysgenesis, which is pointing towards uh, the differentiating features of a classical Turner's, Turner's variant, gonadal dysgenesis, where we have uh, 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 uh seems to be a very uh, differentiating factor, uh, though all the gonad and height, height of the two gonadal dysgenesis, the individual seems to be taught, that seems to be the differentiating feature, and karyotype is important. Yeah, this is androgen insensitivity syndrome where uh, this uh, assistance of the androgen is to the activity of the action of testosterone. Uh, and therefore, there is uh, testis do not descend or uh, the body, female secondary sexual factors appear, there's breast development, vagina, absent uterus, and anemia. So, this is basically an excellent mutation androgen insensitivity syndrome, which results from excellent mutation of the androgen receptor 
gene and mothers will pass on this gene 50 percent of the time to their children daughters being carriers and they do not express whereas affected sons do uh, express phenotypical so the good thing is so for you to utilize testosterone this is female so the phenotypism xy females so they are phenotypically female but me. So, for you to utilize testosterone is uh, in this under this we have five product descriptions and complete androgen and sister syndrome and the complete androgen in sense to syndrome. So, the summary, the final summary is this where we have come into uterus absent and present, and then uh, in the presence of uterus, normal uh, the FSH is going to be side infected, and in presence of uh, in absence of uterus, karyotype analysis and a total testosterone is going to be side. Uh, result. So,